Doctor Who games. Now these are a rarity for unbelievable reasons. When you think about the fact that Doctor Who is a concept that could be potentially infinite in possibility, the fact that games can't take more of an advantage of this is pretty baffling. As a result, the games of this series are an incredibly mixed bag, with some incredibly awesome attempts at creating an interactive episode of the TV show, and some rather, uh, awkward limitations and missed opportunities. But I've left no stone unturned to find the best Doctor Who games out there. And uh, believe me, that was still a tall order. Dalek Attack, an older game released in 1992 which allows you to play as the 4th, 5th and 7th Doctors in a 2D action game, with the 2nd Doctor available on the PC versions. While on the surface it looks pretty par for the course when it comes to 90s arcade sh style shooter maps, the graphics are pretty impressive for the time. And again, while the gameplay looks pretty standard, let's not get it twisted, it is an extraordinarily challenging nee, Nintendo hard game that has intense stages and boss battles, let alone the fact that it does basically turn the Doctor into Batman with a gun. Doesn't use guns? <laughs> His sonic screwdriver is a gun here. Oh, and not to mention the fact he uses grenades now. Grenades are cool apparently. If you're looking for a story with the same feel as the TV show, well this one won't be for you. But if you're looking for a straight up action game featuring the classic Doctors and you're a 90s retro arcade fan, well I say give it a try. While it's far from the best, it is also very far from the worst. When Matt Smith took over as the Doctor, there was a massive boom in merchandising of the show into the video game industry. This particular game features both Matt Smith and Alex Kingston voicing the Doctor and River song respectively in a new adventure presumably set somewhere between Series 6 and Series 7 about their journey to save Earth by gathering pieces of the Eternity Cock, an object that is a record of everything that has or will ever happen in all of existence. It's another 2D game, albeit with a 3D background. I believe they call it 2.5D. Either way, it's a little bit disappointing to see the graphics being no more than, well, PS2 quality rare. Anyway, this works much like the adventure games, but with a more dynamic twist with the apparent higher budget. <laughs> yeah. The Doctor's sections focus much more on puzzle solving and random acrobatics. Yeah, you heard that right. That's tried to turn the Doctor into a tweed wearing Batman yet again. Whereas Rivers focuses more on stealth. However, it's kind of debatable whether the combination works, and sometimes the game gets a little bit confused with what it actually wants to be. However, there are some stunning performances by Matt and Alex here, as well as some entertaining appearances from classic Who baddies such as the Daleks and the Cybermen. And while this game is a little bit of a missed opportunity, it's still an enjoyable experience, especially if you're a massive fan of the Doctor Stroke River pairing. There was originally a plan to be making this into a trilogy, but unfortunately due to poor sales and reception, the BBC cancelled all plans. Whether that's a bad thing or not, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Another game featuring the 11th Doctor, Todd Yu here is prolific in the gaming world. Mazes of Time is the first Doctor Who game available for iOS and it's genuinely pretty good. Starring the 11th Doctor and Amy Pond, they have to battle Daleks, Cybermen, again, and many other enemies in effort to save a family from the future. The game uses a series of puzzles and mazes that require thinking to get around, but not too much. Overall, it's a seriously solid story and adventure, perfect for a bit of break time fun. One of the funniest things is that if Amy dies, she regenerates. Make of that what you will. The Adventure Games! Yet another 11th Doctor game here. This is legitimately because of the fact that most modern Doctor Who games were actually made and released at the beginning of his tenure. Anyway, these are quite marvellous in my opinion. Not only are these games free to download, but they are actually genuinely enjoyable. The games featured the Doctor and Amy facing off against the Daleks, Cybermen because originality is done in a slow death, hence the only original enemy in the series is known simply as Entity, and the Vashta Narada in stories made to an episodic style set around series 5. These are very nice in quality, with better graphics than the Eternity Clock, and a focus on stealth and puzzle solving. There are also several fan-pleasing moments, such as the fact that the City of the Daleks is basically a homage to the Dalek invasion of Earth, and also the TARDIS episode, which allows the player to pilot the TARDIS and visit a couple of rooms. The gameplay is fun and well-paced, with less of the technical and gameplay issues that the Eternity Clock had. 
which is kind of ironic considering the fact that the adventure games were actually cancelled so that the eternity clock could actually exist, and we all know how well that turned out. Anyway, coupled with spirited performances from Matt Smith and Karen Gillan that's the Doctor and Amy, and as well as one from Arthur Darville as Rory Williams in the final episode, these feel like a consistent, fun addition to the TV show. They're free as well, so I would honestly recommend you give them a go. Ah, now we come to my personal favourite Doctor Who game. And it's free. And I know this may be a bit of an unusual choice, but hear me out. While it is a mobile game, Doctor Who Legacy quite possibly is the ideal Doctor Who game thus far. The gameplay is simple, it's essentially one of those gem connect games, but it's so much more than that. There is a lot of depth to the gameplay that is essentially almost an RPG as well. You can take control of a team of one Doctor and five companions, and by that I mean any one of the 13 incarnations of our favourite Time Lord, and you can choose a constantly increasing number of characters from the Hooniverse to play from, from companions such as Rose Tyler or Clara Oswald to little scene characters like the duplicate Tenth Doctor, Jenny, and Siberia from Time Heist. Heck, even historical characters like Winston Churchill and Vincent van Gogh are playable. Now we've covered the best, let's have a look at one of the worst. One which actually makes me want to punch someone in the face just watching back footage. Yep, you guessed it. Doctor Who returned to Earth on the Nintendo Wii. The issues I have with this game are just, wow. This game is clearly one of the worst things to come out of Doctor Who since Time of the Run. Now, third party games on the Wii haven't exactly had the best reputation, but at least most of them are easily ignorable. This, this piece of crap was the result of a one million pound licensing deal with Nintendo. One. Million. Pounds. I've seen fan games with more effort put into it than this. The gameplay is shockingly tedious, and the graphics and the frame rate barely match the PlayStation 1, which when you compare to another game released on the Wii in the same year, like say, well, I don't know, Sonic Colors, is completely inexcusable. Now, it may not have had the budget that Sonic did, even though it did still have a million spent on it for some god knows reason, but it barely matches up to really anything on the Wii in 2010 or slightly beforehand. Just look at the character models of the Doctor and Amy, and compare them to the ones in the adventure games, games that were sold for free. This thing went on the market for about 30 quid. And it's even remarkable that even Matt and Karen's performances are slightly phoned in. Just listen to this. Jupiter. The largest planet in the solar system, home to such exciting features as the great red spot in the gossamer rings and a strange signal. A strange signal? Probably shouldn't be there. Sounds like we need to take a closer look. You read my mind. Well, after all that, that's my top five and one worst Doctor Who games of all time. And if I haven't mentioned a game, it's purely because I found it for me it to be in that gap in between. But I hope you all have a great day. And see you next time.